just a quick huddle update for the house supervisors on 8-16-21. Our mission moment, you made it through the weekend. I think it was pretty rough with the scheduling. I heard this morning from many of the floors, they felt so supported by all of you over the weekend. You're truly our mission moment every day, every shift and every hour. Um, we're glad to welcome Chase to our team. Excited to have him, uh, he's orienting and um, we're just really excited to have him here. Um, just a couple things with the staffing. Sheena Christensen has applied for a position in the ICU. Um, they've offered her the position, but she won't move to the ICU, ICU until 10-3. She's a star RN and she has to be in her home department for one year. So Megan has pre-scheduled Sheena in the ICU. Just wanted you all to be aware. Um, also, uh, when we're talking about the ICU, Chad still needs to orient to the ER if we ever have a night that, uh, that he could do that. Um, our new star techs um, start orienting next week. Um, three of them are days, five of them are nights. They're gonna orient for two weeks and then they'll be on the schedule. Please um, help everyone to welcome them and help them with everything. This is a, a big jump for most of them who have not done any health care. Um, I listed them here. Um, so we've got five nights, three days. Um, I will put this list in the house supervisor office. We have done away with uh, the department 604, which is was our sitter department. We're gonna put them all in float pool. So you can use these new star techs as your sitters, especially for the first you know six months or so until we get our new star techs in. Um, they have been told that they will be sitters if they're needed to be sitters first. So anyway, like I said, I will leave um, a list of them in the house supervisor office. Um, education, please get your code of conduct um, and health stream done as soon as possible. It's due September 30th. So uh, do that as soon as you can. Uh, PPE, leave offered one of the, uh, I think it was either family birth or NICU staff, a uh, Papper Hood, because the staff member doesn't fit in the regular PPE that's the duck bill. She was really uh, grateful that leave offered that to her and just wanted you all to be aware that you can offer a PAPR to anybody that doesn't fit in the regular N95. The next thing, I've had a couple of requests for the house supervisors to do um, things a little bit more the same, um, specifically the codes. So I wrote these out. This is the way they would like us to do them. So like, um, and most of you have been doing this. Um, I think the only change is really, you know, the, the statistics, 34 year old, ground level fall, female. If you know what happened to them after they came in, you know, for, for the trauma. So anyway, just a little bit more information. This is just the information that comes over on the telephone uh, when it, you, when you receive the text. So if you'll just add a little bit more information about the traumas, um, and then make sure that all of the codes that day, um, you know, specific, specific to what happened afterwards. Uh, they would also like to make sure that you have um, anybody that's transferred, you know, a Pleasant View ED, again, a 35 year old, a GI bleed, no MC beds available, you know, just a little bit more information so they kind of know. And then um, continue to do what you've been doing here, case by case, due to capacity, IMC bed full, whatever you want to put here. But um, we just have so many inconsistencies with the way we're doing things. And so I've been asked to ask all of you to make it a little bit more the same. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Thank you so much for all you do. And we'll talk to you later.